you know, we were 20 when the internet was even starting to start to start. And, right. and it was definitely not like the same as like it is today. And now it's completely flipped upside down. So John, 15 year old John right now only dreams of going viral or winning on the internet. And 48 year old John still subconsciously because of the way he grew up, thinks of it as a step down. I understand both. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Well, this is exciting for me. Those are remade Migos. Those aren't original Migos. That's what I love. That's all I love. Yes, they are. They're called Figures from Figures Toy Store, okay. uh, Figures Toy Company. Yep. Yep. I looked for my old Migos. You're the perfect person for this. By the way, we started the podcast. Um, I love it. Because uh, everything, everything that I've been learning about you uh, with going to like garage sales, I guess, mm-hmm. and, uh, and eBay and all that kind of stuff. So here's, here was what I, I was looking for a podcast set. And I was trying to think, what is me? What, 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 what talks about me? What tells about it? And in my childhood, which is where I wish I still was. So I went, looking, I, I went looking for my Mego toys. Oh, I must have sold them at a garage sale to some mm-hmm. guy who became me. famous on the internet. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I couldn't find them. And, I, I, you know, there were some on eBay and stuff like that. I did get some. But there were figures toys, and I just looked it up, and they're remakes of the Migos. The mm-hmm. I think they're five and a half inch. Also had the little ones too, the Migo minis or whatever they're mm-hmm. called. But they were, you know, they were those doll. They were really dolls. They weren't action figures. Correct. Uh, and they were awesome as a kid growing up. And uh, everything's changed so much. I had Todd McFarlane on, and you talk about going the exact opposite way. The detail in those was incredible. It's These insane. were like they take the same head and just paint it differently. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, they, were, so. they were Barbies. I mean, let's call them what they were. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and it's and and in and, and, and when I was growing up, my dad would have been mad at that. And nowadays, it would be it would be perfect. Correct. It, was, it Correct. would be one hundred percent way to go. So uh, you are the guest today, Gary V. Um, which and I didn't know much about you. I, I'm honest on this podcast. A lot of I times, that. I used to try. I used to try and be uh, something I wasn't. <laughs> I, I used to try and be a really good host. Yep. You're one of the people I actually I've heard talk about this, uh, you know, talk about being yourself and that comes through. Um, and I get lost, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. That's why I Same. do the impressions. I bet, really? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm very, I can be focused when I'm like building a business, but like I'm the worst. I also, on my podcast, I'm terrible. I cut off the person 740. I mean, my fans like want to punch me in the face when I'm like doing, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm quite creative in, in a lot of ways that I didn't realize as a kid because I, I all the creative energy went into business and that didn't seem creative back then, back to your earlier point of your dad and all like that, like creativity and not, like the word entrepreneur didn't even exist. I was going to be a businessman and that, that seemed like money and money didn't seem like creative or art or things of that nature. But like, yeah, I mean, I, I have like six thoughts right now. I'm like, thinking about your Ghostbuster figures. I was pumped to see Plastic Man in the background. Like, <laughs> I'm like thinking about the Hogan figure. I'm thinking about some of your impressions that I've loved. Like, like was I mad? Cause I saw that in, before Jets game that was bad. Like, it's amazing how many places in 13 seconds your brain can actually go. Yeah, and that, see, well, I would not have thought that at all. See, I would have thought you were extremely focused. You know, I, I, I did, uh, what got me into I call the it, internet- I call it controlled chaos. I'm focused when, when, I'm on a, I can be micro focused, but I'm, I'm macro most happy in chaos. Could you stop interrupting me? So, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> no, that I, uh, I wouldn't have thought that. Cause I, so I go back to when I started, I got off the internet. So my story is this, I, uh, when I was starting to make a little bit of a name for myself, uh, back in Fox NFL Sunday yep. and, uh, doing stuff, on. Um, on TBS and even a little bit mad TV, the internet was just starting to, to blow up a little bit. The, when I first got to Hollywood, people didn't even really have email. Their email was just starting and people like, I had a manager who's like, you're not gonna believe this. You can type a message to somebody <laughs> on the keyboard and you send it across the country and they get it in seconds. So that world, I was at one point, the number one thing on YouTube before there were any subscribers or anything like that, just YouTube, 
uh, people, there was even a thing where people were like uh, the Frank Caliendo factor of YouTube where people, you know, small blogs would talk about that type of thing. But I got lost in it. I, I didn't I didn't see it like when when uh, Microsoft didn't see what Apple saw. I didn't see the future of that. Which I was very see... common, Frank. I, I actually I remember you on YouTube. I was there very early with Wine Library TV in February 2006 okay. um, when it was like Rocket Boom and Zay Frank and all this stuff. I, I know because Hollywood or if you thought of yourself that way, these things were a micro little stepping stone to the big game. YouTube was like a small club you would play on your way. Like everybody, I remember it vividly that the that 2002, three, four, five, six, seven era really, and then it started to change. But like 01 to 06, to your point, it was like a place you were using to get somewhere. And what I definitely understood back then was like, no, no, this is going to be the somewhere. Yeah, because I was I was actually getting mad about it. I was more. I had more people recognizing me from YouTube at the time than I did when after doing Letterman. And that annoyed me. That, uh, and that's the wrong way to look at it. That's what I've learned is, you know, perspective is everything. That's something you talk about. Ed Milet was another guy who's gotten me into, I saw some of your, I saw all of mm -hmm. your interview with Ed. Um, but Ed was when I was starting to get back into the internet. I got away from it. Uh, just because I was on Twitter and I was building an audience on Twitter and it was so angry. I describe it as like New York City being in Manhattan and when you're walking in Times Square and everybody's bumping into each other and mm -hmm. nobody cares and you, they just start swearing at each other and they mm -hmm. don't care. Uh, I just I just couldn't hack it. I mean, it was one of those things I was just sitting there. So I just got away. But I, I met Ed and started getting into it. I learned about you um, and some of the other influencers. I don't know if you even like that term. Um, I'll tell you know, at this point you get so, you know, to your point, it's funny, like when you put yourself out there and I'm sure you, this happens for you. And really at this point, cause everybody puts themselves out there. Everybody's getting labeled as something like you, you, you I'm just grateful that I have the chance to be labeled, you know, whatever that label is. I'll just, you know, so keep going. Well, listen, the, what I was thinking about is does, well, I, I want to go with your labeling thing. Does that, does it, uh, uh, it doesn't annoy you at all? I mean, to I, me. I recognize, it's kind of like your gift is your curse. I, you know, have built businesses my whole life and built a huge business for my dad in the wine and liquor business. You know, in the last 24 months, had a restaurant app called Resi that I started, co-founded with Ben Leventhal. Um, sell for hefty nine figures to Amex. I sold my direct to consumer wine brand, Empathy Wines for almost a hundred million dollars. Um, VaynerMedia is a $200 million a year, almost $200 million a year revenue based business that I've started from scratch. Yet when I get, when I get mentioned on the internet and you read the comments, everyone's like, well, he's just a fucking motivational speaker. And so, you know, as any human, when you work your face off and you accomplish, you know, it, it's funny to answer you because even as I'm saying it, ultimately I don't mind because I understand how human beings are wired. Thus is yeah. why I've done well. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think we all get miffed. You know, I don't want to be, you know, I love perspective and mindset because I think it's foundational to helping people go do things. Um, but I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of characters that, you know, just speak for the sake of speaking and don't have the resume or the, execution underneath them and of course there's times that i wish that was recognized more but you know i also know that when you have trillions of videos of you speaking on stage being consumed that's the only context and so i have to be empathetic because i'm the one creating those videos and distributing them well I, you know i can relate to that a lot because it, when i used to get mad at people seeing me as just the impressionist guy but then mm -hmm. i realized that's all i'm putting out there I'm putting that out there constantly. Not only putting it out there, the platform you had, I mean, that's definitely the first time I became aware of it. Like when so many of the percentage of people see that because the platform was so big that you were being consumed on, to your point, this is about empathy to the end user of understanding, well, that's what they see. So do you think, as you, I knew, uh, I know a little bit about your story that you built your, your parents' wine business was worth like three million dollars. It was it was doing three million dollars a year, and I grew it to a business that was doing sixty five million dollars a year in an eight year period. And that's by 
bringing it to the internet and realizing Correct. you didn't need to Email. have 8,000 stores. You could your, just have Your everybody. story about YouTube Hollywood was my story about email versus catalogs. I understood in 1997 that the biggest stores in the country, Sam's in Chicago, Sherry Lehman's and Zaki's in New York, Wine Club and Wine Exchange and K&L Wines, these stores that I looked up to because I've been in the business since I was 14 and the Wednesday New York Times dining edition would have all the national ads. And I was like, one day I'm gonna help my dad and I'm gonna take us to the national level like these stores. And those stores that I just rattled off were those stores. I realized in 1997 that I could email out Opus One or Dom Perignon or Silver Oak or Camus or these great wines on email for free back to the agent joke you made earlier while my competitors, these iconic stores were taking three months producing a catalog that cost them a crap load of money and cost a lot of money to deliver and would be two months, two weeks, six weeks, six days later than I could email it. And, and I really, really took advantage of that. And I understood that, it, this was crazy. This is what people thought in 1996. I understood that rich people that bought expensive wine would use email and reply and say they want six bottles. And literally, in fact, this is crazy for every listener, people debated me saying that the affluent individuals wouldn't like that experience and would rather order it from a catalog. People always do that, they do it now. Instagram influencers didn't go on TikTok because they were insecure and didn't wanna start all over. So they would make up excuses that TikTok was only for girls dancing when it was obvious what was happening there People don't like change and I love change. And that has been a huge foundation of my career. Huh. Yeah, that, I, you're, you're kind of describing me with even TikTok there. I didn't want to get on it at the beginning. TikTok was recruiting me to, to get on there. Now, this is when it had just switched over from Musical.ly and I looked at it and I would open it up and I felt like I was going to go to jail every time something I played. I get that. And, and it's changed, it's changed. And it's I think- changed especially I, I guess the vine people found it people mm -hmm. like you found it but what happened was that it evolved and even now when i tell people about tiktok i'm like it's not the same it's not just uh sounds and stuff like that and and um uh you know uh lip syncing it's Correct. it's a lot of content frank that's the thing that i'm good at as well. And I think other people that have the investing or business career that I have are also good at. They're able to look at MTV in 1984 and say, okay, this is not free music. I don't know if you know this story. Most of the big bands in the early, late seventies, early eighties refused to make music videos because they thought it was giving away free music. And Styx, for example, cause I remember speaking to the Styx manager literally decided not to make videos because that was giving away music for free, fuck you. Meanwhile, Duran Duran and Van Halen and, and, you know, and Twisted Sister were thrilled to do it and be, then became the biggest bands in the world in that era. I've always valued the attention of society over the short-term economics of the transaction of a sale. So I would rather go to the new place work hard, figure out how to bring value through my content there and be there when it became the thing versus somebody, I like how you just reacted. Where did your mind just go? I'm laughing because you're exactly the opposite of everything I've ever thought that I've realized I was wrong about recently. Everything that I, I've always put a value, when people would ask me, hey, are you gonna, you gonna go up to the comedy store? You gonna go up to the Laugh Factory and do a set? When I lived in LA, I live in Arizona now. I just thought it'd be a better place to, to raise a family and stuff <laughs> outside of Hollywood. Good so, uh, which is part of my issue. I made a choice. I've heard you talk about, you know, time management mm -hmm. and stuff with that family versus I made a conscious choice, my guilt with family and stuff, which I, I'm, I should, I, guilt seems like a negative connotation, but it's, it, that's no, what it one. was, but it's, it's, it's what I cared about. And I'm glad good that I'm you. here for my kids. Even Dana Carvey's. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mix of gratitude and guilt. Yeah. And it's trying to find that balance. I, it is. I, we I, I, I went way over to the family side because I just knew that was me. I just, I just you needed also to be there. Anyways. That, no, no, let's stay here because I think it's going to okay. help a lot of people because I love, you know, we're getting to know each other. I love you for that because you clearly, it's funny. You talk professionally about the chess moves, but I actually think in your real life, clearly what you care about the most, you actually saw, foresaw the game, which is one day my kids are going to be 20. I'm never going to get this back. 
That's and exactly I, what it was. I can feel it. I literally have goosebumps. I don't know if you can see them through the screen. I was like, this guy's <laughs> interesting. He realized it in the real life, but professionally, because it was so pushed on him that make people pay for your, your value. Did, 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 like people at, in Hollywood and in Wall Street and in Madison Avenue, they overvalue like restriction and they undervalue awareness. Yeah, I mean, I've always been super aware of everything. Like I've comedy club I'm owners. Sorry, I've had awareness from like every rep matters because if one more person knows who you are, that's going to matter long-term. And, right. a, a, and a lot of the monetization and restrictions, uh, my favorite one, Hollywood's obsessed with overexposure. There's no overexposure. Not any, well, there used to be, but they, there used they, to be. you said there's a new perspective on stuff. There, there isn't. Be, there used there, to be ish. What happened was music was hard and like playing the Fonz was hard. Like overexposure was very unique. It was people would get caught with such an iconic role that we couldn't stop seeing them in that role from an acting standpoint. The Fonz, you know, um, whoever, we can do a million of these, you know, Urkel, like, you know, Tony Soprano. Um, but, and then artists would get a lot of plays and there was, to your point, there was only MTV. I mean, you, if you're Madonna and you were promoting a, a, a new album, you could actually get all of America to know it was out if you did 13 things. That world doesn't exist anymore. Right. Well, and I think people have been desensitized. If you look, if you if you open up TikTok, you might see the guy playing the straw hammer, whatever that is, <laughs> five times in the next ten minutes. That person seems overexposed. I guess not even overexposed. That person seems like you see them just as much as you see, let's say, Michael Strahan, who's doing six jobs on television. So we don't even see it anymore. We don't understand it because it's changed so much in it, front of what, us. What you're actually describing is a different point, in my opinion, which is the attention of the world is in a different place. And so if you're in the business world of entertainment, you know that Michael Strahan does six shows and he's unbelievably successful in classic mm -hmm. Hollywood and entertainment terms. But if you're living in the practical world, you're realizing that attention is staggeringly quickly shifting to 15 platforms on the internet and whoever is winning there is winning. Yeah, I, I I mean I didn't even think I see I I still lump it all together. I still have it, what you are able to do is compartmentalize and see these different pieces of media, and that's what that's just me trying to go from old school to to this new school way of thinking. I mean, uh, Pat McAfee. Do you know Pat McAfee? I do. His huge podcast. Yep. Um, he's he's the guy who actually got me back into the internet he started he started me going he's like you should you, you should be killing on there doing voiceovers doing this doing that and i was right. like ah and i i, I you, didn't want I'll to because this, i thought Frank. keep going well i just <laughs> i'll tell you this keep going you're good at that uh i just didn't want to because i saw myself and my podcast partner who's not here right now this is the way he still thinks and we fight about this all the time fight in a ter in terms of, of he's the number he's the number one radio guy in phoenix he's he's a he's a he's a seven figure guy he's set and he's really happy which is perfect and i've heard you that's talk awesome. about that too that's when awesome. you're happy with where you're at that's great five figures um, six figures seven and, figures when you're and, happy game over and probably the most talented guy I've ever met with impressions, mm. the ability. He's kind of like a combination of, you know, the shock jock DJ who can also do the sidekick stuff in terms of impressions, characters. He's got it all. I mean, he and he yeah. and I go back and forth. We work on impressions together. It's it's a, it's a great teamwork and di dichotomy. So we, we get along really well because we think he's like a e slightly more evil version of me, uh, which is in this world, good and bad, but he's edgier. <laughs> Yep. Um, and he takes a lot more risks. I find myself working in corporate America a lot, so yep. I don't take so as many I chances. I, I back off quite a bit, but he doesn't, he doesn't like the internet at all. And I get up, I got back on the internet and started getting on there. And I said, I have to find this new audience. What does he but, not like about it, Frank? I apologize. I'm just curious. Uh, you know, it just feels like a step down to him. Although he, uh, it's, did he grow up wanting to be an entertainer? I I think he grew up wanting to do radio. I think that's yeah. what he wanted to be I mean, a writer way, too. Yeah. I mean that's listen, it's the it's this it's the song as old as time. Like every 15-year-old in America right now, 13-year-old wants to be an influencer when they grow up. 
That was no well, different. I, you know what? I'd say that except for my kid. <laughs> Fair enough. But, you know, of course, you know, I'm generally- No, I, I, I know. I, I know. Like, I just, my, son, know, my son's going to listen to this. Uh, I bo- I'm a year younger than, or older than you. So born in 74. How old are awesome. you? I'm, I'm, I turned 45 uh, in a couple of weeks here. So I'm 46. I'll be 47 in January. So a couple of things. When you and I were growing up, you know, be, you know, being an actor or, or, you know, on TV was, you know, and I didn't want to be, because I wanted to be a businessman, but like half the class did, or, or, or in a different way, almost all of us would have taken it. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. some people were, you know, and I think to your point, I mean, the ideology of your partner was in that era. So to also, is it, how is he in our age group in the general range? Yeah. He's two years older than me, I think. Perfect. John. So as Name's you know, John. right. So John, like, you know, we were 20 when the internet was even starting to start to start. And right. and it was definitely not like the same as like it is today. And now it's completely flipped upside down. So John, 15 year old John right now, only dreams of going viral or winning on the internet. And 48 year old John still subconsciously because of the way he grew up, thinks of it as a step down. I understand both. Areas. Yeah, I mean, I felt I, I I felt like that a lot until I realized, hey, I got to get in front of a lot of different people. I my I I struggle with this too because this is another thing I've I've heard you talk about. I feel like I'm in a therapy session with you. It's good. Um, uh, but it's I it's it's been a learning experience and it's been a difficult step for me to to put some stuff out. It's hard on TikTok. These kids don't know me at all. It's funny because I'll get people, know, these, these kids will tell me things like, oh, that impression sucks. I'm like, well, it built this 70,000 gallon <laughs> pool. Dude. It's good. And by the way, by the way, Frank, I'll be honest with you. Play with me here a little bit. This could be interesting. I think that should be something you try. I think the thought best thought about it. I've well, thought about but it. But let me tell you something. This is very, very big. This is a, this is the whole this is the punchline of this podcast. And we're gonna help three people who are listening right now. I can feel it in my soul. The biggest difference between what made you great and you became you and this exact second is the I thought about it is the vulnerability. You know, you you grew up in a world. I get it. I I'm understand. Gonna cry. You're gonna make me cry. You're gonna be Gary because it's Frankie good, right? Frankie C. Frankie C. With Frankie Gary. C. I'm excited about this because because the I thought about it once. By the way, Kevin James. Let's talk about Kevin James. Kevin James's team calls me a year ago, whatever, 15 months ago. We get on the call. And we have this. I'm on. I remember I'm in California on the highway in between meetings, just on a call, and we have this like really interesting. I just had like a 30 minute like jam session with them because uh, you know Kevin's a Jets fan. You know, we'd interacted a little bit and there was just something, I don't remember what, but something landed in the same way that I'm trying to land with you. Don't think about it. And it just, and all of us, and I just remember the whole team, the writing team and him on there and it clicked and so much good has happened on TikTok and other things for him since. And I genuinely believe the same thing would happen for you, which is in a world where you perfected shit before you showed the world, what what's so fun about this is you get to perfect it with them, not without right. them. And and when I tell you that if you started a whole shtick of you razzing the kids, razzing you, like in the meta of it, that would fucking crush. Well, this is gonna become a TikTok itself. With you saying that, that'll justify the reason <laughs> for me doing it. Done. So, that's what I. That's what I needed. Was uh, listen. I, I. I thought about that. I thought about taking the replies, the you know, the, the uh, yep. reply videos, the comments, the negative comments. I'd even. I'd even mapped it. one out in my head. Here are the following impressions people say on TikTok that that I do that they say I, suck. I, it, I <laughs> think then, I would, a that you should one hundred percent do that. B, when you make a video saying, "Hey, Ricky Pants sixty seven and and you then show him saying this sucks be like you think that sucks what about you know like wherever you go with it whatever the transition is I, but see work. okay so you're jumping into a world of okay see i love the idea of hey i'll show you but at the same time i no, struggle no, no. you've got to be very careful yeah i love you already I'm i struggle you. with yeah. no, i no. don't want to put I, but you, it, can't. you know where you i'm can't. going i know you because going. then That's i look like I the you. big bad wolf Dude, you're the, um, douche, you're the king douche. Yeah. No, no, you play with it for fun. Like, like you'll appreciate this, and I can. I'm getting a sense of you. You know what? You know what has absolutely worked 
for me and others intent. Right. People like Gary Vee, like, you know. And that would be the like, tone of it as well, right? Correct, the tone, the way you put it Or you it invite the kid to swim. Like there's a million places you can do it. <laughs> You see where I'm going? I invite the kid to swim during COVID. Yeah, there, I, yeah. I got these other four kids. They're coughing. It'll be fun. <laughs> okay, Frank, here's my just, Iron Man jackass. <laughs> but Frank, it, it, it really is intent. I remember when I first started putting out content in 2009, and, and I didn't know this, and this goes into your world a little bit. I didn't realize how much Richard Pryor, and I listened to so much Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock as a kid. Like when I drove, it was sports radio. Right. or tape of stand-up. Okay. And, and so I'm 34 years old when I give my first keynote speech about business. And when I tell you I had no fucking idea what was gonna happen when I went on stage, I had no idea. I just went on there. And what happened was when the lights went on, for some reason, I decided that I was gonna communicate as if I was doing a set in a very <laughs> improv. And it was really funny to me that that happened and I think what, uh, so I was cursing like crazy and I was getting so much pushback. It was, you know, 12 years ago, it was a different time with, and, and I remember people begging me to change my style. CAA who did my speaking, cause I hit very quickly and became hot and CAA was doing my speaking at the time and they begged me, big shout out to Peter Jacobs. They begged me to, stop cursing. They were like, you know, you will make so much. It's back to your point earlier about corporate America and the way you think about what you're going to do and not do. And well, I, I'll, before you go on already, I know Peter Jacobs, that's the high end. Keep going. Yeah. So exactly. So, <laughs> so I, I just couldn't do it. I just needed to do me and was willing to deal with the ramifications. And then the world came to me. And the reason it happened was I had intent. I, it's how I actually spoke. It's how I naturally felt. And I had good intent. I wasn't trying to hurt people. I was trying to use it to get them to hear it. And I think if you come out with intent of not being a big shot, but just having fun with the community and enjoying yourself. Yeah, I, think I mean, great. it makes really sense. It that. makes sense because you can do that in a jovial way. Correct. Still keeps, that's what I'm trying to do with the podcast. That's what I'm trying to do with everything. I, listen, I'm trying to get people to understand who I am and where I, cause I'm, I'm much more sarcastic in real life. I'm, I'm goofy and stuff like that, but people see me as the walks the line, maybe goes even halfway to the line but on the podcast i go all the way to the line sometimes go over the line it's me i you know we say things behind the scenes well you don't you talk exactly i, I maybe i shouldn't say i don't know you that well but you go out there and what you're showing is you you're bearing your soul when you go out there and that's what i that's what listen these impressions that i do it's a mask for me to hide, right? It's a, it's a way for me. I'm a kid who grew up watching all these TV shows of all the stuff you saw behind me. I was by myself playing with my Legos. My parents like, you ever going to come out of your room? No, I, I have my friends. They're the super friends. Mm -hmm. They're going to meanwhile in Frank's room. He's putting together a Lego set. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's who I was. And hiding is what I've always been. And this, this internet stuff, when I go out there and look, uh, you know, you see people, the best people, are the people who put it all out there and you see the emotion. I learned this. I, 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 did a, I, I did I apologize real quick. The yeah. ones that have the sustained, sustained success are the ones because there's a lot of people to your point who are absolutely putting up facades without acknowledging it. The right. beauty yeah. of impressions is I know, and let me rephrase. I don't think most people enjoy psychology enough to know that that's what you were doing, but for, I do. Whereas a lot of people are saying they're being authentic. It's why, you know, but then, but then not. And they're the ones that can't have sustained success. To your yeah. point, the sustained success, you know how fun it is to not have to think? Frank, I never have to think. Everything I talk, I talk, I talk. Like, there's no like, oh, like when I go to the restaurant, like, oh, I better be. Like when you could just be yourself 24 seven. I'd love to get there, man. Uh, it, it's that's an amazing I, I'm getting better at it but I, uh, Dennis Miller started screaming at me on a podcast he's like Frankie just be you Chachi what are you doing and he's just screaming at me to just be myself and I it's people don't understand I built these walls around me this was a thing I noticed I learned on TikTok um I did I you know I do the impressions I haven't even gotten to the part of really showing the me stuff and even <laughs> On TikTok, and what I do differently there, and the reason I keep referencing TikTok, that's, I find it the fastest place to grow. You're, you're so I, growing like crazy, and you're being more creative. 
Yes, there's a there's a level of creativity, but what and what gets me to do it, the motivation is the ability to grow quickly. I mean, it's, it's, uh, that, you, I, I, you know what? I love you for that sentence. Like that's a big deal to acknowledge that because I'll be honest with you. I love that as a entree, but you have to basically spend all your time getting out of that mindset. Cause it's similar to being in the room with the Legos, the judgment of others and calibrating it is everything. Yeah. The reason real celebrities hate social media is they don't want the insecurity of low numbers and TikTok's working. Right, TikTok. absolutely. I feel know. that all the time. I live like you, you look it. and you, you see something going down and I have a group of friends we go, we are getting, we, you know, people will just <laughs> text me all the time. What is the algorithm doing? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I just, I've started to just give up on that and throw, I would hide. I used to hide <laughs> the low number ones. And then I looked around at some of the, I, I realized a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are, are deleting, hiding. Perception and I just went, is reality you know what? To them. Screw it. No, Whatever. Frank, nobody gives you... a shit at the end. Yeah. In the end, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, it, for me, it's hard to, because they're, it's trying to go my, from an my, old mindset my, of my what biggest, we used to look my, at. Here's my thing. My biggest thing is you have so much creative talent. I'm devastated that you overthinking something may stop you from making your signature piece of work. Well, that's where I'm getting to this point. That's where I'm getting to a point is I'm getting to a point where I've said, I'm just gonna start throwing a lot more stuff out there. I've heard you talking about it. I've heard- And by the way, it's not spray and pray and throw against the wall and see what sticks. Right. These are actual thoughts in your mind and you're gonna put them out. That's yeah, a big yeah. difference. A lot of people are like, oh, it's garbage, Gary. You talk about volume and quantity, but that's at the expense of quality. I'm like, who gets to judge quality? <laughs> commenters Ultimate. commenters right. Right. <laughs> but but that's why it needs to go out you right. know we you know and i think I, I listen i just think it's an incredible time to be creative and i'm pumped um that you're putting the pieces together to get there in a world where you've got 40 plus years to give well, you don't know me that well. We'll see how long. I it don't, lasts. but I, but I, <laughs> when I say that, I really genuinely believe it. And you're in a craft, unlike athletes. When I say that, you know, and we're of the same age, Milton Berle, right? You go, Jack, you know, you know, like all the, you start going into these names, right? Where you know George Burns, you know, Bob Hope. Like these all were old fuckers when we were kids, but they were still doing right. their thing. Right. Yeah, I mean, I've had, uh, by the way, are you on a time? Yeah, I, I should have left three minutes ago, but I'm enjoying myself and I'm literally texting my team, my business client to wait a few seconds. Okay, uh, then I'll get to the wrap up here. So yeah, go ahead. I, go ahead. Listen, listen, I just, um, to me, I found that emotion and not even always trying to be funny, people, people find emotion on the internet, uh, especially on TikTok and they gravitate toward that. I did those Robin Williams thing that I was just like, Mm -hmm. You know, I miss him. Oh my God, where is, it? you know, that kind of thing. And people went crazy for that. And it's just a learning experience. It's trying to find out even what people, you know, for taking myself out of the internet for a while and then getting back just to see hey, Frank, what actually worked and what it was. Frank, think of it this way. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you a prescription on my way out. And I think it's going to work for you. I really mean it. Make one for them because that's what you're talking about right now. Make right. one for them and then just make one for yourself. Every time, two pills a day. One for them, one for you. One right. for them, one for you. Cause I promise you brother, on my fucking heart and soul, the one that you make for yourself is gonna be the one that changes everything. All right. You know, you I see where see. I'm going, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, my yeah. biggest fear is that so many of the people that fit your profile are sitting on gold and will talk themselves out of it for no reason. Oh, I'm a big, I'm a big talker in ta terms of talking myself out of everything. It's, it's, uh, it's why I'm leaning into this one. I, I think what's so amazing about TikTok for you right this second, because it will change. The organic reach will go away just like every platform. I've been doing this for 20 years, Frank. The growing like crazy will just stop because ads yeah. are gonna come in. It happens on every platform. I've already seen it started, yeah. You have 18 months and in that 18 months, I believe that you make up a fake character because, because we have this talk and you just decide to do that. And that character 
becomes your billion dollar t- movie franchise. Or, <laughs> listen, it's been, uh, listen, I get, no, I've been having those same, it's the same things. It's just, just great go. to hear from you. You were about to say, I'm having those same thoughts and I'm just desperately trying to suffocate it right now from thoughts to action. Just, just make it happen. Just All right, two things, two things Two things before you get going. One, do you know how this interview came about? No. And I, I'm so glad it did because I, I've learned a lot and I'm going to utilize it and uh, use it. I know your... that it was somebody close to me talking about you. Like, I, I've, it's been on my Sean ring. O'Neill, Sean O'Neill, who was a multiple yes. uh, U.S. table tennis champion, yes. who's taught me a lot about uh, ping pong table tennis, he, he texted me, he goes, do you want Gary V on your show? I'm like, he's not going to do the show. Uh, it's a small little podcast. It's just fun. He's like, let me, I don't know if you know him personally or what, We've but he, yeah, awesome. he started, uh, he did that and then it, it worked out. And I, I, since then I've watched a lot more of your stuff and how you <laughs> reach out to charities. And that's how I'm thinking of myself right here. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, that, and I had one, he had one question that I wanted to ask you for him uh, quickly, which was in terms of sports. Yes. What do you think kids should do? And this is kind of a reach, but I, I think do you think they should focus on one sport or multiple sports. Is that multiple sports? Because you never know. Because I think they should focus on multiple sports early on, and then if they think they're going to be professionals, they can zone in. But I think the specialization at the young age right now is more predicated on delusional parents that think their kids are going to the right. league. Yeah. And I think a lot of times by limiting children early on, you're taking away early some skill sets that they might be able to take. I actually think some parents are gonna stop their kids from going to the league by making them one dimensional too early, AKA you're gonna be a baseball player, son. And instead of, and what they could have learned in basketball or soccer or changed them up a little bit from a skill set. I actually, I actually think it's a huge mistake because it, when I tell you the number one delusional animal in the world is parents about their kids going into sports, it's yeah. unbelievable to me how many people are confused. Yeah, and kids' sports are, I don't know if it's just COVID Big or everything, but, it, it, but it's going way down. Have you seen recently? Yeah, the but numbers are going that, way yeah, down. People are going to lose teamwork. Okay, I know you got to go. The last thing is this, um, with your business acumen and prowess, how can you wear a Jets hat? I just don't understand. Have, you ever, have they ever come to you and said, can you talk to us and help us? The Jets were one of my early clients, but the only way I'm going to be able to help them is to accomplish my lifelong dream of buying them and then managing it myself. I can wear it because I love the process. I, I'm loyal. It's, <laughs> it's my squad. I'm not going to bail just because we're the worst team in the NFL. And, and that's who I am. All right. I was looking for a joke you. answer, but I'm glad I got the honesty. <laughs> you got the one. Frank, real pleasure, man. Continued success. All right. Thanks, man. YouTube watcher, what's up? It's Gary Vee. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.